Hi, my name is Mike Aben and welcome to mission 15 of this KSP campaign. The last episode featured an uncrewed mission, so I figured this one should feature some Kerbals. Three to be exact, in four separate missions. But let's start off with what is happening right now. Though the contract title is to explore Kerbin, the requirements are to rendezvous two vessels in orbit about Kerbin. So, right now, I've got Valentina on her way to low Kerbin orbit, and then, right on her heels in an identical craft, will come Jebediah. Speaking of the vessel, well, frankly, there really isn't that much to talk about. With no science to collect and not too far to go, I built a very simple and small orbiter being lifted by an exceptionally bland rocket. In fact, the whole vessel has absolutely no new parts on it, but the entire thing cost only 14,253 curb bucks. In career mode, it's always nice to keep the cost down. A couple of other things of note. You may have noticed during the opening credits that I am now in version 1.3.0, primarily an under the hood update. But the game certainly looks good and does feel to be running more smoothly. You've also likely noticed those Kerbal voices and additional background sounds. They're being provided by the Chatterer mod. I did give this mod a go a couple of years ago, but at the time I quickly got tired of the repetitive and seemingly random phrases. Since then, however, the library of sounds and voices have increased dramatically. In addition, they seem less random and more connected to the actual mission events. Anyway, Val is just about done inserting herself into a 100 kilometer circular orbit, so now it's Jeb's turn. I put Val into a bit of a higher orbit than normal in order to leave a bit of room beneath her, as the easiest way to perform an LKO rendezvous is to launch into a slightly different orbit, preferably lower than your target orbit. I'm also time warping until Val is just a little bit ahead of the launch site. As Jeb will be in a lower orbit, he will be moving faster, and thus catching up to Val. There are those who like to launch straight into a rendezvous, which is certainly doable and does look good. To do that, all you have to do is watch the close encounter indicators as you ascend and pitch up slightly if you find you'll be getting to the target orbit ahead of the target, or pitch down if you are behind. The thing is, the pitching up and down and the possibly high intersect angle of the two trajectories will lower the efficiency of the rendezvous, and, if you haven't figured it out by now, I tend to be a bit of a minimalist in my builds. I'm skipping over much of the details of performing the rendezvous, as I've already made a detailed video on the topic that you can check out if you need some help with this maneuver. Really, for those just starting out, the best advice I can give is just take your time. There's no rush, and just use time warping rather than high velocity to speed things up. Oh wow, the contract has just gone green. All we did was come within the render distance of the other vessel. Well, we're certainly going to have to do better than that. Personally, I love the high-velocity ballet of rendezvousing. There's something majestic about two vessels coming to an almost stop relative to each other, while each is whipping around the planet at two and a quarter kilometers per second. There we go. Our relative velocity is just about zeroed out. We're about 10 meters apart. And just to demonstrate the absolute awesomeness of our two pilots, we're going to have them swap vessels and then fly each other's ships down to the surface. So I'm just going to put this guy on the normal vector point at north. We'll aim the hatch over to Val's ship, and then we'll do the same thing with Val here. Whoops. Come on back a little bit. And there we go. Turn the hatch a little bit. All right, Val. Let's get you out there. Oh, and of course, as soon as we leave, the ship starts tumbling. <laughs> what a waste of time. Oh, well. Okay, Val. I'll kind of park you here. Try and get you stopped relative to Jeb's ship. And here we are. We're on Jeb's ship. EVA. 
And of course, Jeb's ship is also tumbling, but that's okay. We're going to have these two kind of meet up here in the middle. Oh, their orientations are a little different. I was thinking of faking a bit of a handshake here. Oh, Jeb is a heavy breather. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just get them to touch helmets here. Maybe have a little bit of a private conversation while their comm systems are turned off. But then it's time to get them back into their own ship. So since we're on Jebediah, why don't we start with Jebediah, get him aboard. Then we'll get Valentina aboard. And as Valentina was the first person to come up, and has been up here the longest period of time, we'll get her to descend first. Of course, we can't descend them both at the same time. Because they would most certainly go out of each other's render distance, and then one of them would end up being deleted. That would be a bad thing to do. But of course, you've seen these types of descents before. They went fairly routinely, plunked her down, to the ocean to the east of the KS KSC. Then it was Jebediah's turn. Blaze through the atmosphere like a meteor. This being Jeb's third time being in orbit, he has become all too accustomed with this kind of thing. And once we've got them both recovered and safely back into the astronaut complex, it's time to check out the results of this mission. Oh, we got two milestones. We have performed a rendezvous maneuver around Kerbin. We absolutely did. A little over 20,000 Kerb bucks, little science, little rep. And we have performed a crew transfer near Kerbin. Oh, I didn't even know this would happen. Oh, I'm glad I did do the crew transfer then. <laughs> I have to make sure to do that more often around other uh, spheres of influence too. Okay, and then for our contracts, our exploration of Kerbin was successful, but who knows what other secrets it holds. Well, it really wasn't much of an exploration, was it? I mean, we just went into orbit. We didn't really do much of anything as far as looking at Kerbin. We were more concentrating on each other's vessels, weren't we? Oh, well. What's the second one here? Beautiful! Synchronized free-falling isn't as daunting as it sounds. I couldn't agree more. It's one of the most fun things, I think, to do in the game. And now with 797,828 curb bucks, I can comfortably upgrade the R&D Center. Besides making available the next two tiers of the tech tree, this also allows my Kerbals to take surface samples and to collect even more science. And speaking of science, the last couple of missions really haven't pulled in too much science. It's time to rectify that. Yeah, we know Val, just fly. Anyway, freshly back from her historic participation in our first in-orbit crew transfer, Valentina is now piloting our next generation of jet aircraft. And completing the crew for this mission, we also have our scientist Bob, because, as has already been implied, this mission is about science. But before getting to the actual mission, let's take a better look at our new jet. This is my second jet of this campaign, so let's talk about what is different. We'll start forward and work our way aft. First off, we have the new larger circular air intake to pull in more air. Next comes the Mark I inline cockpit, which is lighter and more versatile than its predecessor. Then we have the Mark I liquid fuselage, which holds eight times the fuel of the Mark Zero fuselage. Finally, concluding the theme of bigger and better, pushing this thing, we have the J33 Weasley turbofan engine with significantly better efficiency, not to mention six times the thrust. This is a dramatic improvement over the Juno engines of my previous plane. In addition, this engine has a very useful reverse thrust mode, which I'll be making use of later. All this adds up to a plane that can flirt with the sound barrier, comfortably cruises at an altitude of about 11 or 12 kilometers, and has a range that can take it more than halfway around the planet. As for the mission, as you can see we have three contracts. 
one, to collect some low atmosphere pressure scans, and two, to collect temperature and pressure scans at various points on Kerbin's surface. All of these locations are within a couple of hundred kilometers of the KSC, so this mission shouldn't take long. We'll start with these relatively easy low atmosphere scans, and then we'll head over to the highlands to the west of the mountain range, where we will land to do our first temperature scan. Of course, along the way, we will also be collecting whatever science is available, including taking advantage of our new ability to take surface samples. Okay, we're closing in on our first landing site. The ground doesn't look too bad, but I want to slow down, so we'll use the reverse thrust mode on the Weasley engine for the first time. I have this toggle to the RCS action group, so pressing R gets the engine cowling to slip back, and now throttling up is providing reverse thrust to slow us down. Nice. Not spending a whole lot of time talking about the actual missions. You know, I did spend a lot of time talking about these types of missions back in my last jet video. Neither am I talking too much about the actual design. If you need a hand with designing planes, you might want to check out my basic plane design video. This thing has a stall speed of about 50 meters per second. So I want to stay above that for now, for sure slow down a little bit more but when I touch down I want to be in and around 50 meters per second when I touch down to minimize the force of the impact on these rather fragile landing gears these are still the tier one the first landing gears that you get okay we're coming in close I'm not worried about getting right exactly where the waypoint is more concerned about just touching down somewhere that's relatively saw or relatively flat uh, I think this is looking pretty good. Oh yeah, we got this all lined up. And just... Oh! Oh! Hang on, hang on. Okay. <laughs> oh lord. Well, Val and Bob seem to be okay. Plane, uh, not so much. Oh, that's it. I'm tired of these stupid matchstick landing gear. I gotta get better landing gear. They're really not... I think you can only use them for really light planes. This plane was pretty heavy. Still had most of its fuel and, and when it crashed there. And I think just those landing gear, they just can't support the weight of the plane. I mean, I, can, I touched down, I think, pretty softly. Well, okay, obvious damage to the plane. But for the most part, uh, at least my Kerbals are okay. And Bob can still do a little bit of science, including getting our first surface sample here. But if I'm going to pull off this mission, I'm going to need better landing gear. Thankfully, upon recovering the wreck and her crew, I now have 98.8 science, which is enough for another Tier 5 tech node. And right here, I have landing, which includes the LY-10 small landing gear. So after picking that up and making a quick visit to the space plane hangar to swap out the landing gear, I decided to just go right back and do this mission again. Same crew. I mean, we, you know, it wasn't Val and Bob's fault that that happened. So here we are. Back in the same place again, going again for the same waypoint. Oh, we're in the zone. But it doesn't matter, we can turn around once I've touched down here, and nice and carefully, easy peasy, beautiful, okay, let's uh, start turning around here, wait, wait, what's going on, oh, gosh, I'm still in reverse, <laughs> okay, there we go, and with that, it was a simple matter to collect the temperature scan. These waypoints are fairly closely clustered together. You can make the decision to just drive from one to the other. Oh, hang on. We just went from highlands to grasslands. Oh, we got a whole new batch of science to collect there. Okay, oh, oh, we've just gone in to the area for this waypoint. So we'll bring us to a stop. We might also take the temperature scan for the contract. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep this, but uh Oh, well, we got a lot more other science to get too, so we're going to have to get Bob back out there once again. 
including taking another surface sample. Of course, other than driving, you can also take a quick hop and an additional landing if you feel it's a little bit too far between the waypoints. Once the temperature scans were complete, it was time to head to Zone 5H4W for the final contract. Now these LY-10 landing gear are a dramatic improvement over the LY-01s. I've complained about the latter in previous episodes. They're so fragile that I first assumed that it was a bug, but it's been a couple of major updates since they were introduced, so I have to assume that this is what Squad wanted them to be. The LY-10 and all future landing gear also have the advantage of being retractable so they can get out of the way so your planes have less drag while they're cruising. Final contract involves surface pressure scans very close to the KSC. In fact, after completing the last one, it was just a short drive to the runway for recovery. Now, just off the runway is actually a KSC biome that is separate from the surrounding shores biome, so I took advantage of that. In fact, there are quite a number of mini biomes scattered throughout the KSC that can reap you a fair amount of easy science. Something I definitely plan on doing in the future, especially now that I've got surface sampling. But I would rather build a vehicle that is a little more appropriate for scrounging around the KSC than this jet. Definitely something for a future episode. In the meantime, the conclusion of this mission got me back over 90 science, so another tier 5 node and I went with miniaturization, which provides a number of nice parts, including some small adapters, but more importantly, my first docking port and the 0.625 meter stack decoupler, which will help me with my deployment of small payloads. And after picking up a few new contracts, I ended up with 478,293 curb bucks, which I used to upgrade the administration building which does allow me to make better use of the strategies element of the game, but really, I just did it to bring all of my buildings up to tier 2. This still leaves me with plenty of cash for my next mission, but that is going to have to be for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.